How you doing, everybody? I know I'm a little late to the party on this one, but I finally saw Independence Day Resurgence. This is, of course, the sequel to Independence Day, once again directed by Roland Emmerich and starring Will Smith as Sir not appearing in this film. In the movie, as in real life, 20 years have passed, and in those 20 years, mankind has experienced an unprecedented period of world peace. We have reverse engineered the alien technology for our own use, which has greatly enhanced our lives. We even have an outpost on the moon. All is well. Until the thing that inevitably goes wrong in these sorts of movies inevitably goes wrong. The aliens are back, this time with an even bigger ship than they had the last time, and they are not merely content with taking over the Earth now. No, no, no. They're just gonna blow it the fuck up. I was kind of looking forward to this one. I didn't exactly expect anything great out of it, but, you know, I enjoyed the original Independence Day when it came out way back in 96. And I figured, even if it wasn't fantastic, I could at least get some fun out of this one. Now that I have seen the movie, I think Will Smith made the right call to pass on this one. Why he passed on it is a matter of debate. The studio says he was asking for too much money. Smith says he had a scheduling conflict with Suicide Squad. Either way, he made the right call. This was... this was not good. But the last movie I talked about, Warcraft, that wasn't good either, and I still had fun with it. This one... this was not much fun. It was just big and loud and dumb. Like Donald Trump. hey -oh! So why did I have fun with Warcraft and not with Independence Day Resurgence? Well, I think the main difference between those two films is... Warcraft actually had characters. Independence Day Resurgence just has people. For that matter, that's also a difference between Independence Day Resurgence and the original Independence Day. The original had so many memorable performances from Will Smith, Jeff Goldblum, Brent Spiner, Randy Quaid, Bill Pullman. You know, as corny as his little speech in that movie is in hindsight, I still remember it. I'm having a lot of trouble remembering anything about this movie, and I just saw it a couple days ago. Independence Day Resurgence, or let's just call it IDR, introduces so many new characters, and they are all completely forgettable. Celia Ward plays the current President of the United States, the first woman to hold that office in history, and... That's it. There is nothing else I can tell you about this character. Just talk about a wasted opportunity there. They have William Fickner playing a general. Again, nothing else I can tell you about this guy, and that's a shame. I mean, how do you waste William Fickner? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles used William Fickner better than IDR, and that is just sad. And we got a new batch of pilots. Who fucking cares? And it's not really any of the actors' faults, they just have nothing to work with here. Even the returning players feel like they're really just going through the motions, except maybe Bill Pullman, whose character has significantly changed since the events of the first movie, and also, to a lesser extent, Brent Spiner, who is just so batshit it's impossible to forget him. Uh, and he's apparently gay now. Yeah, well, I guess his character was always gay, they just never mentioned it in the last movie, but yeah, he's been in a coma for the last 20 years due to the events of the first movie, and apparently his boyfriend has been taking care of him this whole time. Who knew? Well, sorry, Doc, you woke up just in time to watch the world end, but on the plus side, you can get married now, so it's not all bad. I don't even know why they bothered to bring Judd Hirsch back. He had nothing to do with the plot at all. I think the only reason they brought him back was, well, he was in the first movie, we gotta put him in there somewhere. Vivica A. Fox, same thing. Her part in this movie was pretty much a glorified cameo. She did more in Sharknado 2 than she did in IDR. Even if Will Smith had come back, I don't think he could have saved it. Visually, the movie does look pretty good, but there's really nothing here that we haven't already seen many, many times before. And the story... is not good. And also, nothing we haven't already seen many, many times before. Really, this is just a paint-by-numbers disaster movie. I've already seen this movie several times, and not just from Roland Emmerich. Looking back on the original Independence Day, it may not have been a great movie, but it was at least an entertaining spectacle. When we all saw that trailer, and we saw that image of the White House getting blown to shit, like, 
Sold. Sign me up. Can we buy tickets in advance? I'm there. But while watching IDR, it's like, oh, look, they destroyed London. Okay. Oh, look, it's another sequence of someone frantically trying to run away from this wave of destruction behind them. Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt. Sadly, the stuff I do remember from this movie is the really stupid stuff. And there's quite a bit of it. Early on in this movie, some sort of wormhole opens right next to our moon base, and an alien craft comes through, which does not appear to be hostile, they don't see any obvious weapons on it, and it looks nothing whatsoever like the aliens that had attacked us 20 years ago, so naturally our first instinct is to shoot it. And they take it out quite easily, and everybody immediately starts celebrating, yay, we shot something down that obviously wasn't a threat, woohoo! Really? And as you may have guessed, later on we find out that it was not the same aliens that attacked us 20 years ago. It was an entirely different alien race that had come to help us. Oops. And for all of the advances in technology that humanity has made over the last 20 years, we have apparently forgotten how security works. After they shoot down that mysterious alien craft on the moon, Jeff Goldblum's character naturally wants to get a look at it, and Liam Hemsworth, for no apparent reason, decides to help him out, and he steals a ship, flies all the way down to Earth with it, picks up Jeff Goldblum and his buddies, they fly back to the moon, snag the alien ship, and fly it back to Area 51. And nobody bats an eyelash. No one even thinks to raise any sort of alarm. If my phone gets stolen, I can go on the internet and track its exact location. But these people can't track a fucking spaceship? Our technology may have improved, but our intelligence has not increased in parallel. So, yeah, not really sure if there's anything else I can say. It's, it's not really awful. It's just, it's a disaster movie and nothing more. And I don't know if this is gonna make enough money for Fox to consider a third movie. Roland certainly wants to make a third movie. They tease a third movie at the end of this one, so I guess time will tell. I don't know if they should really bother though, because if this is the best they can do after 20 years, maybe it's time to just pack it in. If you're a fan of the first movie, I would say maybe give this a rental, but that's as far as I'm willing to go. And that about does it for Independence Day Resurgence. So until next time, take care.